Okay, when we left off, we were talking about uh, amplitude and frequency. Frequency is how many waves pass by a moment in a given second. So when the waves are really bunched up here in the bottom right corner, that is a high frequency wave. Well, there's a lot of waves that are passing by a given point in a given second. So the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. That's this image here. This one, the, the wave isn't even, I can't even see a full wave. So this is a low pitch uh, frequency um, or a low pitch and it's very low frequency. So low pitch, low frequency. For amplitude, the smaller the amplitude, the quieter the sound's going to be. Uh, the louder the sound, the higher the amplitude here. So, so the difference between the equilibrium point and the crest or the equilibrium point and the trough is going to give me how loud or quiet a sound is. Um, speaking of, let's, let's talk about uh, speed of sound. So the speed of sound for a given material is pretty much constant the whole time, unless there's a few ways to change it, which we'll talk about. But for non-humid air at 20 degrees Celsius, it's 343 meters per second or 767 miles per hour, which is pretty dang fast. Um, but we're going to see that there are a couple ways of changing the speed of sound. The first way is to change the stiffness or rigidity of the material. So the more stiff a material is, the greater the speed of sound. Uh, the density is going to be uh, how, how much, how massive the material is. And if you increase the density, it's actually adding more inertia, making the wave harder to move along the material. So density is actually going to increasing density will decrease the speed of sound. But which one matters more? So we have uh, iron... Uh, think of an iron dumbbell. It's both very stiff and rigid, and it's also dense. So which one matters the most? And it turns out that stiffness tends to matter the most when we're talking about the speed of sound. So an iron dumbbell is actually um, going to have sound that travels through it 14 times faster than through air, just because it is more stiff than air is. Um, in general, we can follow this rule that the velocity of sound, speed of sound through a solid is going to be the fastest. Through a gas is going to be the slowest. And the li uh, liquid is going to be somewhere in the middle, in between. It's going to be faster in a liquid than it is a gas, but it's going to be slower than through a solid. Uh, let's think about this case. If I have hot air, um, hot air is less dense than cold air. So it's the same material. Stiffness isn't changing. I'm just changing the density. So is the sound going to be faster or slower through hot air, which is less dense? Well, remember that if I increase the density, it's going to decrease the speed of sound. So if I'm decreasing the density with the hot air, the speed of sound is actually going to go faster through hot air than cold air. So let's start talking about light and electromagnetic waves. And the first thing we're going to look at is the waveform for electromagnetic waves. Uh, light falls under that category. So this is also what a light um, wave looks like. Uh, notice that it's made up of a magnetic field wave and an electric field wave. They're going to be perpendicular to each other. And using our right hand rule, we can see that the velocity of the particle, the photon, is going to be going to the right. Um, the speed of sound or the speed of light in a vacuum is 300 million meters per second. So it's a lot faster than sound is. And another thing about light and the electromagnetic waves is that they don't need a material to go through. They can go through empty space. So sound has to go through a material. Electromagnetic waves, light can go through pretty much anything. Um, some things that light does. So let's talk about reflection. Specular reflection is the same as when you're looking in a mirror or you see a perfect reflection of mountains off of a, uh, a lake. So I think I have a couple examples here. Um, just like this. That's specular reflection. It's perfect reflection. It's mirror reflection. And what's happening is it's hitting. If you take a look at the left-hand side here, the, the light is hitting and then it's bouncing perfectly off of it. With diffuse reflection, what's happening is the surface is rough and so the light coming in gets scattered. And when it gets scattered, it loses the image. Snow is a great example of this because it is white. You can't see the perfect reflection of anything off of it. So it is a diffuse reflection. All that light is getting scattered. And I'll come back in the next video.